like some Triton detergent I have to pipette later or glycerol, you might want to reverse your strategy that you normally use and think about reverse pipetting. So basically, when you have a micro pipetter like this, their plunger, it has two stops. It has this first stop, which is part way down, and then you can push it even further to the second stop. Normally, when you're doing a forward pipetting, what you're doing is you go down to the first stop, you go into your liquid, you pull the liquid up while you're still in the liquid, and then you take out. And when we call it sucking up, we call it aspirating. So now you take your aspirated liquid, and because you went to the first stop, now the liquid in here is going to be the amount of liquid that you want to dispense. So you want to make sure that you get it all out when you go and put it into your tube or whatever you're moving it to. So then you can go all the way out, push all the way down to the second stop when you're dispensing it. But what about reverse pipetting? So the problem with forward pipetting, it works great for most things about like watery things, aqueous solutions, things that aren't going to be really syrupy or viscous, things that aren't going to be very volatile, so they're not going to um, like evaporate inside of here. Um, that, then the forward pipetting or, or the, um, yeah, the forward pipetting works well. But if you try to do something really viscous, well, first of all, it's hard to actually suck it up. And second of all, it's hard to actually get it all out. And so you can have it like stick to the walls inside the tube. And so you're trying to blow it out. You're trying to get it out. You're trying to get it out, pushing all the way down and you can't get it out. So reverse pipetting, how it works is you start by going down to the second stop. And this way, when you, now you put down to the second stop, you go into your liquid and you pull it out. Now you're going to aspirate, so you're going to suck up more liquid than you're actually going to dispense. And this extra liquid then, the way you can do this is when you go to your tube, now you're only going to push down to the first stop. And you're going to have some left over in the tip, but that's just waste. So you can get rid of it by blowing it out, so you, now you push all the way to the second stop, but this isn't to your waste or something. Or you can just pipe, eject the tip before that if you don't need that. I'm um, to use the tip again. Some other things that you, two strategies when you're using these viscous liquids. So first of all, a warning. So some people say to like cut the tip off your pipette. This will make it easier to suck liquid up, but it'll also mess with the accuracy of your pipetting. Um, and so you don't want to do that. Unless you're just using it to like transfer a liquid from one place to another, but you don't care about like the accuracy of the actual volume that you're transferring. You're just kind of kind of like when you use one of those like uh, what do you call this like a transfer pipette with a little bulb um, so when you're not caring really about the accuracy then you can cut the tip off and it'll make it easier to suck things up but if you do care about the accuracy then you don't want to cut the tip off another thing when pipetting viscous liquids is you want to go really really slowly if you don't what's gonna happen is kind of just kind of like freak out and suck up and that's gonna get a big air bubble you don't want that so go really really slowly both when you're going up and when you're going down so when you are um, sucking up, when you're aspirating, you want to do it with like your pipette vertical. Um, this will help you get the most accurate results. Another thing about pipetting is that, especially for viscous liquids, what you want to do is you want to pipette when you're dispensing it onto like a little bit of an angle and onto the wall of the tube or like into a solution in some cases. But what you're doing when you're doing when you're doing it into the wall of the tube, basically what happens is that the liquid that you are pipetting out, now it's going to have adhesion to the cell, to the walls of the tube. And this is gonna kind of help pull it out of the, of the pipette tip when you are pipetting rather than kind of just like trying to see like, oh, gravity, let my drop, drop. Um, so that'll help. But just like the liquid can stick to the walls of the tube, it can also stick to the walls of the pipette tip, both inside and outside. So the inside is going to be a pain when you're trying to get everything out, which is one of the ways that reverse pipetting can be helpful. Um, on the outside, it can be an issue if you stick your tip too far in and now you've got a bunch of liquid on the outside, especially when you have one of these like sticky liquids that's really gonna stick. So you wanna do it at like a minimum distance under the surface, but you don't wanna do it too high up because you don't wanna get bubbles. Um, speaking of bubbles, inside of these pipettes that we typically use, these are like air displacement pipettes. They're also positive displacement pipettes, which work um, it, like they actually have like a plungery type thing. But with these, what happens is you like suck up air and then you're displacing the air. And so if you have something that's volatile, so something that's going to evaporate, 
when it can like evaporate and then it can kind of change the amount of air and so you end up having these errors in your um, and dripping and stuff from your pipette tip because you have all of this extra gas that's kind of pushing things down. One of the things you can do to help with the accuracy of these sort of things is by pre-wetting your pipette. So basically, before you're actually ready to dispense it, you do a, a few like trial runs with this tip um, and you're pre-wetting it. Um, this is also gonna push out any gunk that might be on the inside of the tip, um, but it will also like equilibrate the air or whatever so that you make sure that you are being more accurate. Um, so I don't usually do that, but if I'm working with some sort of things, I, I would do that. One thing you can do in order to try to make sure you're pipetting the right amount, and you can do this even with non-viscous things when you're learning how to pipette and that sort of thing, is you can actually do it with water um, and then mark the water line. And then, then make sure that when you're pipetting whatever you look where you're pipetting, it's going to the water line. Another note about viscous solutions, so sometimes you don't actually need to pipette them. You can, um, if you're doing a larger volume, what you can do is soap, say, for glycerol. Instead of using 100% glycerol all the time, I typically use like an 80% or 50% glycerol solution. This is going to be way, way less viscous, way easier to pipette. Um, and so when you're making that stock, what you can do is you can actually do it in like a big graduated cylinder, fill it up to the volume that you want minus the amount of glycerol you need, um, and then pour the glycerol into the water until the line gets to the point you want. Um, and this way you are just um, like, have to pour instead of or dripping or whatever instead of actually having to pipette um, another thing you can do is you can like weigh things but then you have to take into account the density and the temperature and various complicating factors if you want to be really accurate